the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And bless the God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face, but whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israel what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory in the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And the voice had spoken. Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed into the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's an old joke about a Presbyterian who accidentally falls down a flight of stairs. He gets up, dusts himself off, and says, Well, I'm glad I got that behind me. <laughs> I'm not much of a believer in predestination. But I would say there is a tinge of providence in the inability of Bishop Kendrick to be here today. While I certainly regret his illness, I am delighted to preach on today's lessons. All of them. Today is the last Sunday after the Epiphany. As it, or as it is known here, is the Sunday before Fat Tuesday. It is also our last Sunday of Alleluia's before Lent sets in. The lessons focus on transformation. Perhaps the key term in my understanding of the gospel. The lessons are univocal on this. In order, the three lessons deal with the form of transformation. The first lesson from Exodus tells us of Moses coming down from Mount Sinai. He is later found wearing a veil over his face because of a holy radiance known as the Shekinah. He has been in God's presence and he has been transformed by the experience. In the second lesson, which we did not read today, 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing about how life is different 
for people before and after embracing the gospel. This lesson too refers to a veil. The person who has not yet embraced the gospel wears a veil, adding the radiance of God's presence. The person who has embraced the good news is without a veil, letting the light so shine that people may see the good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. Finally, there is the gospel. Luke's account of Jesus and his executive community, Peter, James, and John, ascending a mountain where they experience the transfiguration. Jesus shines radiantly. As one translation notes, his clothes shine brighter than any fuller could bleach them. At the height of that moment, as Jesus is sitting with Elijah and Moses, Peter utters his ecstatic enthusiasm. Master, it is good that we are here. Let us build booths for you, Moses and Elijah. But the moment passes. Normalcy returns. They must move on but they have been forever changed. They can never unsee what they have seen. They can never unknow what they have known. They are new beings, and it would not be the last time their lives would be changed. As hymn 661 says, The peace of God, it is no peace, but strife closed in the sod. Yet let us pray for but one thing, the marvelous peace of God. No doubt, like most scriptural stories, these passages have different layers of meaning, all of which are true. They testify to the awesomeness of God, the primacy of Jesus as Savior, those meanings among others. But I see a consistent theme. The experience of God's presence is transformational. We cannot truly know God and be the same. Our thoughts, feelings, behaviors, convictions, and ways of seeing the world cannot be merely baptized and remain as they were. It is not possible to be touched a little bit by God. It is not possible to encounter God and remain the same. God is not a simple touchstone that we touch and remain as we are. As John Newton, the former slave trader, who experienced the presence of God, wrote in his hymn, Amazing Grace, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Despite what others may say, it is not a one-time experience. Over many years and experiences, we grow in knowledge and insight that God gives us. We see the complexities of life. We go from seeing the world as one-dimensional. We see our faith not so much as a hammer and cudgel, but as journeys that are complex, nuanced, and subtle. Faith gets deep. Not a little dab will do you. It is a bit like going down a rabbit hole, but a rabbit hole that leads to grace upon grace and mystery upon mystery. I have been on this journey for 65 years, at least. It is not simple. It includes great heights and deep valleys, rocky and smooth roads. To paraphrase Paul and to quote an old hymn, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. 
But the journey of faith is well worth it. Life and perspectives change. I invite you to come along. Amen. 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 Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The God and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for us salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was there. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious and loving one, you have revealed your glory in Christ. And you call your church to be transformed into the image of Christ from one degree of glory to another. Let your transfiguring grace be present with us, bringing the light of Christ's resurrection to the needs of the world. As we pray, let us confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Holy and transcendent one, through Christ you have revealed your divine glory in our humanity. Awaken the church to see your presence manifested throughout the world, that we may serve you with a hope that acts with great boldness in your name. Let us confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. God reigns enthroned over all. Let your glory be known among the leaders of our nation and all authority in the world, that they may accomplish your purpose to establish equity and to execute justice and righteousness. Let us confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Send your transfiguring light forth into all the world to heal and comfort all who suffer from sadness, illness, poverty, injustice, or oppression. Speak your healing words and show us the light of your countenance. Let us confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Visit the community with your enlightening grace and reveal yourself as you did upon the holy mountain, that your brightness may shine forth from this place to the glory of your name. Let us confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. We have come to this holy place to wait and to pray. Hear our intercessions on behalf of those whom we commend to you. We pray especially for Russell, Angie, Arthur, Doug, Jay, Nicole, Denson, Leanna, Roger, Carly, Lil, Lynn, Warren, John, Scott, 
Mary Lou, Becky, Myra, Sean, Ashlyn, Chris, Will, Jane, Shirley, Betsy, Liz, Rod, Amber, Mary, Rem, the Hines family, Claire, Daisy, Lisa, Pat, Nathan, Angie, the families of Mary Frank Nix, David Van Laddingham, and Janet Weeks, Hope, Cynthia Maggie, Kairos outside, Kim, Russell, and all those in need of prayer during this pandemic. Are there others? We also pray for those in our long-term prayer list, especially Margaret, John, Donna, Kristen, Chuck, Keith, Ralph, Martha, Adrian, Warden Gladys, Will, Kermit, Ivan, Roselin, Dean, Ryder, Donald, Janet, Jean, Tom, the Yule Battle family, Doug, the Mike Dwyer family, Jean, and Vicki. We pray for all first responders and all in the armed forces and for their families, especially Joe, Tim, Christopher, Brewer, Lewis, Patrick, Brandon, Ashlyn, Sarah Grace, Bernie, John, Cody, Hunter, Joey, Derek, Austin, and all in harm's way. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our fellow parishes of Holy Spirit in Gulf Shores and St. Thomas in Laguna Beach, Florida. We pray that you weave your diocesan capital campaign into your kingdom and consecrate to your glory that which is given. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Kenya. We pray for all the people affected by all natural disasters. We give you thanks for the light which shines into our lives, especially for the wedding anniversary of Kathy and Barry and the birthdays of David, Jack, and Kathy. You have taken your own creation into the cloud of eternal life. May your eternal light shine upon those who have died and, whom, and for whom we pray. Let us confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. We give you thanks, O Holy One, for the dazzling word, vision of the glory of Christ, our hope and our inspiration. May all creation behold the light of your countenance and be changed into Christ's likeness from glory to glory. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, we live in glory everlasting, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. First peace, Betsy. Thank you. Thank you. God's peace. God's peace. Yeah.
First of all, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. I am not Bishop Kendrick, and he is not here today. He he has a, a a cold, and he just thought it would be good style not to appear careless in, in this season. And so uh, he let us know on Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember. And uh, so I'm. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad you're here as well. And I hope you know we welcome all visitors and want to remind you that all baptized persons are invited and encouraged to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion at this altar. And if you're a visitor, we would ask that you complete one of the visitor's cards found in the pew rack and place that in the alms basin when it comes around or give it to an usher following the service. One brief reminder I will uh, say, uh, I will speak is Ash Wednesday. Lent begins this Wednesday, and we have Ash Wednesday services at 10 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, so just let me mention those to you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, they saw what is said. I 
rights to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to Thee, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because of the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. our Passover sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thy spirit.
Thanksgiving, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, to the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Make you perfect in every good work to do of his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.